an observation about this universe is that some things are inexplicably perfect, while other things appear to be imperfect. And this is really interesting to me because when I consider the idea of God, I look at those things which seem so very perfect. Um, you know, the fact that I haven't found it necessary to take a drink since I made a decision to turn my will over to God. Um, love, um, the promise, you know, of joy. You know, certain relationships just seem like the right fit at the right time. Um, events just happen. Things seem to fall together in a way that's just beyond coincidence. And to me, that indicates that there's consciousness, that there is intent, that there is a force in this universe of that that is creating this perfection within this universe. And so the question becomes then, why has this force not created a perfect universe? Um, there's perfection within the universe but there doesn't seem to be perfection in the universe as a whole, because of course there's all this suffering. There's the war and the um, death. There is the departure of loved ones. And so, one explanation potentially is that this force, God, or whatever we want to call this force of perfection, simply is limited in its power and its ability to create a perfect universe, um, and thus it only creates perfection in a way that it is either able to do or that it is choosing to do. Maybe it's there's a lot of different things it could do, but it's just choosing to do the things that maybe to it are the highest priority. Um, you know, it's keeping the main objectives at play in this whole kind of drama. So, you know, I find this universe confusing because it seems to me like joy could be so immense and yet it could be so much more of that meant if death wasn't on the horizon. But I would think this would be obvious to an intelligence cre capable of creating perfection. So anyway, uh, just some food for thought. It's the weekend. I got my kids this weekend. Diamondbacks are 2-2 in the National League Championship Series. Um, so if they win two more of these last three games, they'll be going to the World Series for the second time to attempt to win their second World Championship. It's really nice that we have that legacy here in Arizona that 
our team has a legacy of having won a championship because there's a lot of conspiracy theories in sports. There are a lot of, uh, sometimes you get a feeling if your team's never won a championship, like it's rigged, like it's just, they're never going to let you win one. But for the Arizona Diamondbacks and for our city in general in Phoenix, uh, we have seen that we can win a championship, that it is possible. Um, we won a championship in the most dramatic fashion uh, against a city that was having a bit of a rough spot at that time because it was New York just after 9-11. Uh, we played some November baseball down in Yankee Stadium um, and they beat us in Yankee Stadium, but they couldn't beat us here in Phoenix. You know, we protected home turf. Tonight we got a critical game five. D-backs hosting the Phillies. Two aces squaring off. Wheeler and Galland. Wheeler got game one, but that was in Philly. Now... We'll see if we can write a different story here in the desert. In the meantime, the Phoenix Suns are looking to dominate the league this year and attain their first championship, which we know this city is capable of bringing home. So with that, you guys have a great weekend.